You know, ever since seeing that film of Bernard Falk falling about in the Cairngorms, I've had the itch to do a bit of skiing myself. Unfortunately, I haven't made it even to the Cairngorms since then, never mind Switzerland. However, all is not lost, because I've been put on to a homegrown alternative, which I'm told is nearly as good as the real thing. Plastic ski slopes made of these sort of bits of hairbrush sewn together. So I'm off on a skiing safari to the English Alps. First stop is Kidsgrove, near Stoke-on-Trent, rumoured to be proud possessors of the third longest plastic ski slope in Britain. The local council has splashed £40,000 on it, a large amount of which is gone by the looks of things on signposting the eager public of Kidsgrove towards their new status symbol. As you approach with the prospect of a brisk afternoon on the plastic beast before you, you can't help wondering how Kidsgrove managed all these years without a ski slope of its very own. Great heavens! There's been a landslide. Only a few months ago, it's alleged, there were people whizzing down these very slopes. Now, a scene of total desolation. I suppose those are the plastic hairbrushes all in a heap at the bottom. But skiing here is going to be a bit of a sticky problem. Mr Booth, you're a chairman of the Residents Association. I've come all the way to Kidsgrove to have a ski. You seem to have had a bit of a landslide or something. Landslide? It's waterlogged. <laughs> they said it was a natural slope and it wouldn't be a great expense. But it'd become great expense to the ratepayers of Kids Grove. How much? Well, it's a regular estimate was about £24,000. And my latest uh, information that I get to know is near on 40000 why do you think the council was so anxious to spend this huge sum on a, on a, on a slope that uh, has turned out to be a flop? Why? Well, all that I can say is they must want it to empty the copper before they went into the Newcastle Bury. You mean they were just trying to empty the purse before they got the chop as a council? Yes, well, that's uh, what it looked like, like, as, uh, as they were all uh, for this slope. What about that uh, bit down at the bottom there? The bridge. That was uh, somebody's idea at the town hall. They didn't know anything, in it, anything at all about it. And uh, they just thought they'd build a bridge and uh, extend the ski slope in, onto the football pitch. But they found when they got down to the football pitch that they couldn't get back again. Pity the way Kidsgrove's plastic hopes have melted away like snow. But here we are, 70 miles northwest, in Notty Ash country, or, to be precise, at the Kirby and Fazakali turn-off of the M57, where suddenly the plastic ski slope of your dreams looms above the Kirby landscape like a great white elephant in the sky. The ski hoist to pull you up to the top is not yet operational, but when you feel the wind on your face, it was more like a gale, actually. And the mud beneath your feet, who's worried? It was scheduled to open in October, but some minor insurance problem has held things up. So I shall be the first member of the public ever to descend the virgin plastic. But hold on a minute. Surely they've built it the wrong way round. This is motorway madness. Can the planners of Kirby Council's skiing subcommittee really have intended their man-made Alp to run straight towards the Liverpool to Manchester carriageway of the M57? There seems to be a perfectly acceptable bit of wasteland on the other side, which would have ruled out any chance of a nasty accident at the Fazakali turn-off. Walsh, it's the wrong way round, isn't it? Well, they were building Tower Hill, the new estates, and they started putting all the muck that you didn't want on Tower Hill here. So they had a mound of muck down, and some bright spark in the council said, well, let's build a skiing slope with it. So they then imported some muck from Liverpool, and we've got enough up here without getting any more in. But they imported the muck up here to build a skiing slope. Now, 
It's been slopes over very well in other parts of the country or other parts of the world, but not up here in Kirby. We don't need a skid, not at the moment. We may need one in the future, but not at the moment, definitely. They sold our old muck back to us. Mind I don't blame the contract. It's good luck to any man who makes a few shillings. Like, you know, we're not against that. It's just the planning of us, you know. And as Mr. Curley says, there's a lot more essential things in Kirby needed at the moment. If you're going to put it on sport, or why not put it on five-a-side football pitches, you know, for the kids. And that'll be more useful. We didn't go on and play there for nothing. Not hitherto known as a rendezvous for the skiing set, Kirby acts as the model for Newtown in Z cars and is more famous for its other winter sports like shop breaking and vandalism. There are others as well as Chris Walsh who hint that the £121,000 needed to build and equip the slope might have been used to meet more obvious needs. After bidding a reluctant farewell to Kirby's controversial winter paradise, I heard that Wigan were planning a plastic ski slope on one of their several spare slag heaps. But apparently, and perhaps wisely, they've gone off the idea. So it's on to the Oldham Alps. Here, the local council pioneered the idea of municipal plastic skiing as long ago as 1970. They finally opened their slope this year, just in time for my visit. Luckily, Oldham has plenty of hills of its own, so it didn't need to import muck from Liverpool or anywhere else. Oh, another hitch. The hoist bust. Seems to be some sort of a jinx on England's plastic fun spots. Now then, what else is wrong? No sign of a landslide? Seems to be set well away from the M62. Not facing the wrong way, either. Success of a sort at last.